Hello, everybody. Thanks for having me back again. So Rob asked me to introduce the 3x3 three three sessions to you. And uh, it's, it's quite tricky. It's a challenge. It's a challenge for these guys. Because I love this line by Churchill. He said, I must apologize for the long letter. I'm afraid I didn't have time to write a short one. And that's what we're asking these guys to do. We're asking them all to write you a short letter. And it's difficult. Uh, you know, I was chatting to Don a few minutes ago, just before we came up. And we were chatting about Steve Jobs at tech conferences. There should be a limit to the amount of times the dude is allowed to be mentioned. Right? Because he's kind of like, quite, you know, he's quite the easy target. And <laughs> thanks, mom. <laughs> And I know they always say, don't speak ill of the dead. I think that's a crap idea. I think, don't speak ill of the living. You know, the dead, they're fine. And sometimes I think Steve Jobs was a little bit of an asshat. And the reason for this is because he sets wheels in motion that, that I think that often we didn't think about. Have a look at this quickly. So this is the iPhone 4S. Does anyone here own the iPhone 4S? Anybody still? Now, I can almost certainly guarantee you that there's absolutely nobody ever said, my iPhone 4 is too thick. <laughs> nobody complained about this, right? What I can guarantee you that every single person who's owned an iPhone in 4 in their life has said is, my battery sucks. Right? Everybody. Now, Apple and all their genius, what do they do? They bring out the iPhone 5 that is thinner with a crap battery. This is like going to the doctor for a headache and getting your colon irrigated, <laughs> right? I got a lot of mamas in the room today. This doesn't make sense to me. You see, when it comes to innovation, I think the mistake we make is we forget about Goldilocks. The idea is not too hot, not too cold. The idea is just right. Anything we innovate or iterate, we have to decide beforehand of what is the just right. And when we reach that point, we've got to move in a different axis. And I think presentation follows the same rule. When you're putting together a presentation deck, you should always be asking yourself, uh, how entertaining do I want to be? Or, how much content do I want to deliver? And what I've discovered is, for the most part, the good prezos are the ones that get that balance right. And what I want you to do, because we're going to ask you to judge these speakers, is I want you to look for that. I want you to write on your papers the, the guys' names when they come out, and I want you to write two columns. I call it my cupcake theory, this, right? There's the cake and there's the icing. The icing is how well they delivered, and I want you to score them out of five on that. But the cake is the point that they got across. And remember, a presentation only has to get across one point. So what I want you to do is not necessarily get seduced by the amazing speaker that was hilarious but didn't offer value, but also not uh, get too caught up in the content that was one, two, three, uh, but didn't entertain you. Because you're here for a smart show. That's what a conference is. But more importantly, what I want you to do is show the six people that are coming onto the stage, three now and three after tea, a whole lot of love, because it is nerve-wracking being out here, and they probably have the biggest challenge of anyone, to get a whole big message across in three minutes. So you're going to cheer your asses off for the first of the three speakers who are going to come out, and then you are going to cheer when they leave. Ladies and gentlemen, for Gary, Nathan, and Kirby, let's hear it. Thank you. Hello, hello, hello. My name's Gary. I work at a company called Obion. Today, I want to talk to you just about advertising. I love the laughs, but um, actually, the biggest concern I've got is that advertising is having to get really smart. Um, we all know it's changing. And they're looking for smart people like yourselves. And I think the biggest thing I want to bring across is you actually, there's a few things you've got to worry about, and there's a few op opportunities as well. So first of all, I think you've got to decide who your hero is, who you aspire to be. There's good old uh, Zach's, but I'm sure you guys don't know who the other guy is. He's pretty famous in the advertising world. And I think some of the key things we've noticed is we've got guys starting at our agency, some juniors and interns, and they're not talking about the big idea or the amazing project. They're actually talking about innovation. They're talking about startups, and they're talking about venture capital. I'm like, what the... So the, the, there's a few uh, positives with an agency. The one is cash money. You're going to get offered loads of it. You probably get offered a ski trip, free holidays, sushi, lunches. There's great office space, and you get to win awards. 
Woo! Uh, obviously, there's a bit of a downside. Uh, the one is, um, you guys didn't get the font right. But anyway, the, the downside is that um, there's red tape. So, uh, the, I mean, you're going to come up with great ideas, and then they have to go through a band, brand matrix, comstrat, the brand identity. You know what you might actually do? You might as well actually get your idea off the ground take it to a venture capital, and then sell it back to the client. It's probably quicker. And then uh, the, the other problem is that there's deadlines. Uh, you're gonna, uh, agencies don't know how to manage clients, so you're going to probably be working on about two or three uh, deadlines at the same time. You're not going to have time to work on your own startup ideas in the evening. Forget that. You're trashed. You're wasted. Um, and then you've got your traditional mindset. So you're going to walk into an agency, and you're going to meet a Mr. Art Director, and Mr. Copywriter, and they're going to come up with beautiful TV ads and billboards, and then they're going to say, make this interactive, thanks, thanks. And or, can you win us a lorry at the same time? Um, so there's some negatives. I mean, I don't want to leave you in despair. I mean, there's the narrow road, and then there's the, the wide road. Um, you just, I think the biggest thing I want to bring across is that you guys do have choices, um, and you've got to think about that quite clearly, because you're probably all going to come across it. What I want to bring up, though, there's hope. <laughs> there, there's a new agency there's, um, that thinks like startups, that incubate their own, that talk VC, that talk about getting products off the ground. You should do your best to explore those. There's a few cropping up here and there, and it's, it's, worth, it's worth looking out for. But before you consider, just think about one thing. Is advertising even going to be around? Thanks. Cheers. Hi. Wow, this is quite exciting. Well, my name is Nathan, and I'm yet to tell you a story. Early last year, Emil, Rudy, and I were having a coffee, as we often do, discussing the local tech industry. We discussed some of the challenges we face in our businesses in terms of lack or shortage of technical skills, and the need for a local hack space. We had an idea and decided to make it happen. Office Reliance offered us their conference room and internet connectivity to get the club going. We decided to make use of existing learning material and frameworks instead of starting something from scratch. We set a date and had our first meetup. The meetup became known as G3ECS. We meet up weekly and have two, two, two main streams at the moment, alternating each week between hardware and software. We're not teachers, but we provide facilitation and coaching on a practical level. Our aim is to breed a culture of problem solving and innovation instead of consumerism. Young and old tell stories and explain concepts. We run quizzes to ensure that everybody is listening. We take things apart, TVs, Decoders, printers, you name it. We look inside to get an idea of how they work and have a lot of fun at the same time. We build retro game stations. We make things. We run show and tell at the beginning of each session to encourage the children to talk and get them familiar with public speaking. We've been going for a little bit over a year now, but there's a lot more that we'd like to do. We'd really like to add a design stream to make the club more appealing to girls who like pretty. And <laughs> the challenge we're facing is identifying a, a creativity mentor. So that's on our wish list. We'd also like to build more robots, but we're working with a lot of children who don't come from rich families, and they need kits. A Raspberry Pi or Arduinos would be great. We really want this model to scale, so I want to tell you what we've learned so far. Working with children is freaking awesome. The penny drop moments are priceless when they realize what an HTML tag does on a page and when the font goes pink or blue. It's like, wow. We have parents that come to, to the club with their children and it's a great opportunity to bond. Whether you've got skills or not, it's a good chance to just learn with your child and spend some good time together. You need lots of multi-plugs. <laughs> Not everybody's got a laptop, so some of the children bring uh, desktops. 
We've even got a, ch a, ch a child whose mother made a carry bag for his desktop so he can bring it to club. We have ages, ages rating from under 8 to 70. And it's important to have content that caters to each age and skill set. So we split the children into groups. And whether it's hardware or software night, cater to different, um, let's call it whatever they fancy. Uh, it's important, or the, the challenge there is to ensure you've got enough mentors to spend quality time with the children. We work with children from impoverished communities, and the challenge we face is that it's difficult to scale when you don't have access to infrastructure at home. So connectivity, laptops, if you don't have them, you can't carry on learning. It ends at club. We've contacted our old PC, uh, one laptop per child, to try to get access to cost-effective devices. But decommissioned corporate laptops would work just as well. We found that there's a real need or a lack of understanding with parents who grew up without ubiquitous access to the internet and a technology-driven life. They don't understand the risks their children face online. They don't understand the relevance of your personal brand. And they either let the children do whatever they want or they restrict them all together because they're scared. So we're busy putting a program together to make um, or to bring parents together and allow them to face these challenges and come up with a solution to digital parenting. So I'm sure you all think this idea is freaking rad, and it's time for you to get involved. So what we'd really like is for you to start uh, your own club in your own town. Alternatively, if you're a corporate and you've got anything to give away, we would love to have your old servers, hard drives, whatever you don't want, we can put it to good use. Donate time. It's so valuable. If you've got a skill that you can share, donate it in a club near you. And if you really want to give us some money, um, we're a nonprofit and we're working through the Garden Root ICT incubator. So when it comes to voting time, please clap really, really, really loud so that I can come back next year. Thanks very much. Hi there, my name is Kirby, I'm a marketer, um, I do a little bit of consulting, and uh, I like to think of myself as a bit of a wise ass. And uh, today what I want to talk about quickly in these three minutes is how we as marketers in the digital realm support consumers in purchase making decisions. Now, the internet platform as a media offers us two things, and I think we can agree on these. There's the convenience element, the fact that I can do my shopping in my underwear if I choose. And then, of course, there is the depth of that engagement. And Don said last year that if what you're putting online is doing more for you as a brand than it is for your consumer, then you're putting the wrong stuff online. But I'm not entirely convinced that we're actually taking full advantage of this. It seems to me that what's out there most of the time is just a bad translation. We get a bad translation online of what exists offline. We build a website, we put on PDFs of our brochures. It doesn't add anything special. And more than that, it doesn't do anything for the South African context. What we so often see is that websites and, and e-commerce platforms are built against models that have worked elsewhere in the first world. But we're not the same. And there are many, many reasons that we're not the same. And here are a few. In South Africa, we view payments very differently to how they do in the rest of the world. I was in the US in 2011, and Chase Manhattan Bank launched a new app. And this app allowed you to bank checks by taking photos of them within the app on your phone. Fantastic. But my question was, who the fuck still uses checks? <laughs> I mean, we're in a third world country, and that's completely obsolete to us. So there's absolutely no point in it. So there is an advantage that we have in this country. But a disadvantage, how do we feel about service levels that we receive from different companies? Do South Africans feel the same way about the South African Postal Service that people in the States do about the US Postal Service? I see a barrier. And thirdly, and we speak about this often, we need to think about how it is that people enter onto the internet. The new wave project that was released by the Network Society, South African Network Society project um, out of WITS tells us that seven out of 10 people who are accessing the internet in South Africa are doing so via mobile phones. So why is it that we seem to be trying to retrofit a model that was based and grew out of a desktop world onto mobile phones? Why are we not actually working this to our advantage? So I think the challenge to all of us 
is to actually take a moment to go shopping and then think about what happens there and innovate something new around this. Because I don't think we're getting it right just yet. Thank you very much.